Hello there, it's Simone. I'm talking with my hands. Today is June 9th, 2023, and I am going to share just some random stuff that happened this past week that I thought of that I want to talk about. As per usual, I am going to update my reading journal first. And I have read one book or finished one book this last week, and that is 27, uh, where did I write it down? Yes, right here, <laughs> uh, Thieves Gambit. I talked about this in my last uh, video, Gambit by Kavion. Lewis and it was an audio. I believe that I read or heard about this from the Currently Reading podcast. It was one of the books that Katie brought to the show and it is a YA um how do you describe these books? Um, one of those puzzle games, obviously it's about thieves. It's about, there have, have been various books in that subgenre of whatever. This is how informed I am um, that I really enjoy. Like for instance, Mr. Lemoncello's Library the um, Hawthorne thr Trilogy by um, what's her name? Jennifer Heritons Games, The Final Gambit. I didn't write down the author. But um, The Inheritance Games, The Hawthorne Legacy, and The Final Gambit, all of those are in that it's kind of a puzzle, but it's not a, you know, not a thriller and not a locked, um, locked. See, that's, that's why I don't have a reading podcast because I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, if you know what I'm talking about, maybe you can help me out with a name for these types of books. They're puzzly. Um, they're fun. It is um, exciting and adventurous. And so these are part of this, this series. Um, I love the, these types of books. And so when I heard about, I don't see any others so the brothers hawthorne jennifer lynn barnes that's the author of the hawthorne th trilogy and there's another book coming this summer by jennifer lynn barnes in that uh world that i'm i have already pre-ordered my son loves them too and so that's a nice thing that we can share i don't see any similar types of books unfortunately here in this in the books that I have um read recently but if you know what I'm talking about I would love to hear it um these this specific book is a little bit more YA than for instance the Hawthorne trilogy um it's very special in the sense that the main character is part of a thieving family and she has been secluded basically all her life uh, and just uh, spent time with her ma mom and aunt and that is a problem for her. She wants to just live a teenager life. Um, and that is something that is very dominant in this um, in this book. It's who can you trust, who can you not trust. 
Um, and I liked the story. What I felt was very, the conclusion at the end of the book was something that I felt was lacking. Um, so it's, it's all about who can you trust, who can you not trust. And of course, because she hasn't been around many other people, she doesn't trust the right people in the beginning. And so uh, the conclusion basically is, this is not spoiling anything, is don't trust anyone. Uh, which I found to be super cheap, a super cheap way out because life is more nuanced than that. You have to be able to learn from your mistakes of trusting the wrong people. And so to come to the conclusion to not trust anyone is a bit cheap, especially when that is what her mother has taught her all her life and she wants to break out of it and then to say, well, maybe mom was right and I shouldn't trust anyone. Is that really a solution? Is that how the character grew? Uh, yeah, so I, my son read the ebook in February and I asked him if he remembered and he was like, yeah, I liked it. But also something was off and that is exactly what I felt too. Um, so maybe I'm expecting too much. Maybe it's this is because it's a YA and that's why it's so um, cheap conclusion is what I'm going to write. But I still liked like that adventure aspect of the book um, because it's just it's it's some kind of fun and I'm going to use a red pen now to underline so the red is working because I'm using blue yes I am not using my trusty old well fairly new platinum 3776 century in Bordeaux Bourgogne uh, with an extra fine nib and platinum carbon black inside. I am just so in love with my Pro Gear Slim Mini in azure blue with a medium fine nib. I have inked this with uh, Lamy Pink Cliff ink and I just really love how these two play with each other. So I've been really writing with this a lot here. Uh, two of my notes for um, the last videos were written with this pen because I just like it so much. This is also, by the way, a really good example of a notebook or journal that is not pretty at all. We, people on my Discord have talked about this. Are we sharing only the pretty stuff? No, I am totally not. Um, it's a notebook and I really love it. I love the size and when this is done, I will definitely get another one of these. So then I am currently reading, there's nothing you can see. And I also actually don't, well, I'm decorating this, but I'm not trying to write pretty. I'm not trying to be pretty in here. This is really lovely in my opinion just sticking down things, trying things. It doesn't have to be all super, super cute and matchy matchy. And still I am having fun using this notebook. And now that I'm flipping through this, I think, well, maybe I, I, I'm lying. This is definitely decorated. So, uh, I'm currently listening to The Sun Does Shine by Anthony Ray Hinton. Um, the subtitle is really nice, but I don't remember what it's called. Something like How I Found Joy uh, on Death Row. And it's um, co-written by Lara Love Harden that I read um the book I read earlier this year, which is one of, uh, was really good. 
the many lives of Mam Mama Love. Um, yeah, and so I'm I'm listening to that book. I found it through her audiobook. I found that she had co-authored, or what is that called? She's a She's writing the stories of other people for them because she is a writer and they are not. There is a name for that, which I have forgotten. So I'm listening to that. I think I'm 20% in um, and I'm very impressed. And again, as we usually have this here, there is a cat. Um, then I have, don't touch the thing though, dude. Um... There is, I have two books that just came in from Holtz that I decided to loan from the library. And uh, so I have, after this book, I have the choice between The Ministry of Time by Kaylianne Bradley and Gwen and Art Are Not in Love by Lex Croucher. Um, Gwen and Art Are Not in Love is, if I remember the uh, setup, that was also brought to currently reading by Katie. Um, then it is kind of a an LGBTQ fun, possibly romance, but not really. I, I'm not sure. But it sounded like it was going to be a fun and um, light book. Um, not sure if the topics are light, but it seems to be easily digestible and then I have also heard the min about the Ministry of Time from currently reading um, and I'm just going to I have heard some mixed reviews about this book some people it really worked for some were not necessarily that impressed I have no expectations for either one of those books um, if they don't work for me I'll just you know abandon that's the reading stuff. I will link the books that I just mentioned in the description box down below. I have totally jumped on this fountain pen. This just came in. Um, it is the Lamy Safari Special Edition 2024 um, Pina Colada. I am totally on board for all of the mixed colored safaris. I think it levels them up so much and I just couldn't resist. I don't know if this pen is going to stay with me for a long time, but this was an easy way to support one of my favorite um, pen retailers, Vaness. Um, and I, my sister and her family are coming over from Germany this summer in two weeks-ish. <laughs> Can't believe it's coming closer and closer. Um, and I mentioned this in another video earlier. If their children show any interest in the stuff that I'm doing and I'm, her older son is always super, super interested in everything. So if he shows any interest, I know that they write with fun pens in school. Um, and if he likes it, I'm totally game of just passing this along. Because this is a an online exclusive, I also know that they don't have this pen just yet. So this would be a fun thing that he could totally take home uh, from his aunt. I think that's also something that, you know, I bought it. I bought it for myself. But if he likes it and I know he might write with it in school, then I am so excited to just pass this along. So I don't know how long this pen is going to stay with me. I have all of my inked pens right here. And every time I look at it, it kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. I love it. But still, if I if I look at all of this, even the the colorful glittery pen here from Wall Town's pens is not as bright as this piña colada which i'm also going to keep it, it there is no 
I'm not saying that I need to get rid of it because it doesn't fit with it. But if I have the opportunity to, to give the pen to my nephew, I will totally do that. So this is new, not sure how long it's going to stay. This is new, how not, not sure how long it's going to stay. I want to update you on my washi as well. I have been, first of all, let's talk, let's talk through the things that are in here. So as you can clearly see, I am, I purchased this date washi tape from Dodo Lulu sometime in the fall of 2023 and I loved it. I still love it. However, um, when I purchased it, I was still journaling almost daily in my long form writing journal, which I have abandoned. Um, I don't know for how long, but for the foreseeable future, um, I have abandoned my long form journal when my puppy came along. So I am not using those, but I love them to just cut out, cut out and stick them and decorate uh, stationery with it. So I'm just using a um, paper pad from, where is it? I'm using a San, I think I talked about this before. I'm using a San Zentomo River uh, A5 writing pad for my letter writing. And then I'm cutting this out. Then I'm using the Pion tapes here to uh, stick, to ground this person on the ground. And it's just, it's so much fun. Of course, I'm not going through them as fast as I wanted to, but having what I especially love and what makes this so worth it for me, there's no repetition at all. I I can I have a new image every time I want to use one. And they are just so much fun to use. I cannot tell you how much I enjoy this, even though I'm not using it as I had intended to use them. So that's that's that. Um, I love them. Then I also, I think I shared uh, these tapes, one, two, and then I bought a third one, but I swapped it out for another uh, tape to use which is over here. Um, I've been writing notes or letters every day in the month of May. And I have still kept up with this practice in June. And so I have been using my tape to, when I'm writing longer letters, I'm decorating. Now there is a fuzzy thing. Oh, look at this washi tape. This is older and so much cat stuff here not cool but again i've been using this to put the the girls on top ladies women people um which i i just really like and i'm not hoarding it anymore or any longer i've been using this tape from sissy's art cafe um so these are older tapes and I put one of those aside to pull out these, just to rotate through those more. I'm going through it. I'm trying really hard. The only thing I'm not really uh, getting to are the meatball tapes. And I talked about this every time. I haven't put them up yet. I've been actually thinking of just selling the leftover rolls that I have, because clearly my taste might have changed. But I'm just so in love with this tape. Again, I'm fuzzy cutting this, putting this on my stationery, on, on the let paper pad. I have a decorated page. Um, and I'm, I'm really working towards just using those things. And I've been sticking those stamps on every letter that I have sent out. 
yeah so i wanted to update you and tell you that i've been really good about using this i've been swapping them out frequently so that i would will be able to use the different designs um i also want to share some updates on statements that i have made on yesterday's video so because i am sharing this ad free with my kofi members and then releasing it out to the public at a later date this might be old news to you because i plan on also mentioning this in my next summer of bottles video which will come out before this if you're a normal person um but i still want to talk about it because maybe i'm just going to touch on it then and i also don't know how many people of the fountain pen people are watching the snippets of my desk videos but they're fresh on my mind so maybe i i want to talk about them so first this is lamy violet blackberry um and let me pull this out and it is so overpowering with the sheen even on this paper which last time that i tried it out oh wow now you can't even see one single sheeny thing let's see if we can see it here but basically what you're supposed to see what i can't seem to be able to share with you right now is that this is extremely sheeny even on cosmo air light paper where i haven't had so, so much sheening just yet on here i hope i can show it to you it's basically only gold sheen um, and it appears to be black with gold sheen the color however is a uh, really saturated berry color blackberry color and so i've been sharing on Instagram that I have used this ink and pen. I put it in my Platinum 3776 with a medium nib. Um, this ink and pen and that I probably will pass along this ink because it's just so, so saturated, so sheeny that it doesn't bring me, and it doesn't give me anything. And so p two people commented that they had put distilled water and mixed it with it and it was uh, a really good solution for them and so i remembered i do not have um i don't have distilled water but i do have dilution solution a sample of dilution solution from uh my friend casey who sent me a sample of it and so i uninked the pen put that ink in a sample vial added a little bit more ink and added dilution solution and tried out tried writing with it the first thing that i learned or noticed is that maybe possibly if i am using a very fine nib it might be possible to see the base color instead of the sheen but also that the more dilution solution i added the less sheen was there so it's here if there is still a lot of sheen maybe 50 per 50 50 in the upper two paragraphs here down here um there is some sheen on some letters but there's also quite a bit of base color to be visible and then i did the same thing on tomoe river paper there's definitely more sheen on that paper, but again, I do believe that this could be a solution to make this ink less sheeny. I had, um, so if I dropped in more and more uh, drops, I mix it up, I dipped it in, I tried it, and then I 
added more dilution solution. I started out with about three milliliters of Lamy Violet Blackberry. And then I added 10-ish drops plus five. And that was almost a three to one ratio because that was then a total of four milliliters. It was exactly on the line. And then I added 10 more drops to that mixture which brought the level up to about 4.5 milliliters. Um, but that is a lot of dilution solution in it. And it's still not, I still can't really see the base color. There's still a lot of sheen on top and it's dark. It appears almost black. I wish, maybe I can, I have a writing sample. It was more like Alexander Hamilton in the color, in the base color. See how they're, it's dark, but you can see that there is a little bit, a little bit of magenta -y purple. This is what I would assume aubergine or violet blackberry would look like. Not this. So I don't know if this ink bottle, even though I'm able to reduce the amount of sheen, is going to be for me. And especially if I have to go through so much effort uh, to dilute it. When we clearly see uh, there are inks that have a color, are dark, and are visible. So I don't need to... If I had Alexander Hamilton, it would look a little bit different. But I would be able to see a color. I wouldn't have to go through mixing this ink with something else to get it to be how I want it and so I'm not sure that I'm going to keep this and then in that video I also said that Kobe number 47 Aotani Cascade Green was a lovely ink and that I probably wouldn't buy a bottle of Shioro if I already had this color in my stash and I just couldn't think of, I couldn't let go of that thought. And I wanted to see how they compared color wise. And even if, I'm not sure, it almost looks like a very good color representation. Uh, even if they're not exactly how they're in real life, there is a difference, a really big difference. And I really like this color. So maybe... I don't even know if I'm going to add any bottles, but this is so beautiful. And why, if I see or say that these are different enough to justify a bottle, why can I not have a collection of 10 different teals? Like, who says that I can't have that? Nobody. Nobody. It's just me and my, in my mind. And so I can make other rules. So I'm always drawn to these kinds of colors. I love these kinds of colors. I love using them in fountain pens. I enjoy my writing experience a lot. And, you know, if 10 of my pens are inked and they're all a different shade of teal, I don't think that I would get very... Uh, that that wouldn't bring me joy. And so if I end up with a bottle of Shiro, I will not feel bad at all. I just wanted to show you the perfect color match for this pen. Isn't this like just perfection? So if you have a honeycomb fountain pen from uh, the honeycomb colorway, in the Estabrook SD model, then you might want to know that Diamine Sepia is the perfect color match for this pen. Now, I believe it's a dry ink, so if you do not like dry inks, then you might want to use a different ink, but lovely. So that's all the updates I wanted to talk about. Oh, let me leave this here because yesterday, I inked up my Pilot Custom 823 with Diamine Evergreen, which is an ink that I made a stupid mistake. So my friend Mari 
from Doodles Damari sent a sample of Diamine Evergreen to me, sharing with me that it was one of her favorite inks. And I swatched it and I said, oh my gosh, I love this. Um, it is similar or in a similar vein as um, the... Where is it? I think I put it on that same here. Yes. It reminds me a lot of all of those inks. So Krishna inks Chennai. Taranishi Guitar Gentle Green has a tiny bit more blue. And Diamond Evergreen has a tiny bit more green. And then Tachiya Hokusai Sabi Midori is... Uh, also a very beautiful ink it it's even bluer than gentle green but so i swatched this and then i gave it away without even putting it in a pen and then when i had it given away i realized huh i never used that ink in a pen ever at all but i purchased a bottle and I'm so glad I did. I only purchased a 30 milliliter bottle, but I think I could have just gone for the 80 milliliters because this is an amazing ink. But what um, happened was I put this ink in this pen. I wrote with it and I was like, this pen is perfect. This pen is perfection for me. This is feels like home. And even though it is a vacuum filler, I feel that way about this pen. And then my, so when I shared this on my Discord, where in contrast to Instagram, where I'm not up to date, but on Discord, I am up to date. I'm sharing the pen and ink that I use that specific day. So when I shared this on Discord, my friend Wendy Sue asked, and I'm going to... Oh, I shared it and I said, this pen feels like home. And I didn't think much of it. But then my friend Wendy Sue, who is Wendy Sue. No, Fountain Pen News on YouTube, but Wendy Soup on Instagram. Um, she said, well, I've heard you say this and I'm quoting ish. I've heard you say this more than once. I'm so happy for you. Did, did this pen feel like home from the start? Or did it grow to this feeling for you? And then she also mentioned that she, for her, writing with a fountain pen feels like home. It doesn't necessarily be a specific fountain pen. And so that got me thinking a little bit about all of this. And so I thought, maybe we can talk through this. Um, I replied to her that everything about this pen feels right. Which, now that I think of it, not everything. The back filler doesn't make this pen right. But I want to talk about when I first received it, I got a pen a custom 823 on loan from my friend um i'm blanking and it's so easy sarah from ginger peachy pens she loaned me hers and then another um member of my community friend sent me theirs as well and gifted it to me if I liked it. And from the first time that I used it, I knew that it was definitely a great pen. It felt great in my hand. The grip section is the right girth. I don't feel, um, I feel like I can hold this and it's just there, you know, it, it feels like it could grow onto my hand and it's there. Um, it has the perfect grip section for me widthwise. There is no obstruction in any, there's no step up. Um, there is a little bit of a flare out here, so I don't feel like I have to grip onto it so it doesn't slide. 
And the weight distribution of this pen is amazing. Um, and I think that that is because of the piston rod here for the vacuum filler that is here. It is metal and it makes this pen just sit in my hand at the perfect, you know, like it's, it's there and it feels great. And this pen is wet. It is smooth. What I found, I really loved glassy smooth nibs on Tomoyo River paper in the beginning. Uh, that was something that I was just, oh, I, I loved it. But now I like it with a, just a tiny bit more tooth. Um, which when I write with this pen on Tomoyo River paper, that doesn't give it to me. It's too, th too smooth for me. However, the Sans and Tomori River paper has that exact tiny bit of tooth that makes this pen perfect for me. And so, so now this feels home. What are the other pens then? Are they not home? Could I get rid of all of them? Um, of course not. I'm answering the question right now, but I it just made me think about all of this. What is my collection? What pens do I have in my collection? How, why does this pen feel like home and this doesn't? What makes this different? I love writing with this too. Now, like, you know, I'm taking it out. I'm posting this one. This feels good when it's posted. I like it. It's great. But why is this not home and the custom A23 is? I haven't found an answer just yet. This one feels great as well. So it definitely gave me some food for thought. And it also um, made me think about pens that I haven't had this experience with just yet. Um, maybe it's this is something that I need to go into more with the... Uh, the thought that I really want to love every single pen in my collection. So if it's not love, then what is it? What do I need to do to make me love it? And I know that I can't like be extremely excited with uh, racing hard when I use a pen. But that's something that is just... just just the why. Why do I love it? And maybe that is something that I really want to add to my fountain pen uh, compendium that I still haven't started. I'm saying it every time. And you're like, Simone, just start. Just get it over with. Get started. Um, maybe that's something that I should add to that instead of going through all the technical specs that you can find on many of the retailer pages. Why why don't I put more of myself in here? Why do I love this? Why does it feel like home? Why doesn't it feel like home? All of those, you know, philosophical questions that you can ask yourself about this hobby, about the pens. You know that I love these kinds of things. So that's where my thoughts are this week. And... I have written quite a few letters and I haven't even touched my journal at all this week. So this is how I put it away. I don't even know when. And so I thought maybe we can just like, you know, get situated. This is how my weekly spread turned out last week. I had, I think I talked about this a little when I said that I had a really bad June 1st and so I yes I went through my my stuff right and then I found all of these things that were so awesome and so I decided to do some hidden journaling and I have just as an aside, I'm feeling much better today. Um, it started getting 
gradually better. I I do, which is maybe it's a good thing, maybe it's a bad thing. I haven't decided yet. I don't necessarily dwell on the bad things for a long time. Um, I'm, I'm very bouncy like that. I'm pushed down and then pew, I'm back up. I can uh, compartmentalize and just, you know, shove them in a bad, dark corner of my where. Where would that be? Heart? Soul? Brain? Not sure. Emotional uh, organ? And then I can just, you know, hyper focus on the things that aren't important, like what makes a pen feel like home. And then I can really easily push all of those feelings aside. And I'm not saying that that's a good thing. I haven't decided if it's a good or a bad thing. But this is empty. I have been using my planner more. So... I had to cut something out because there was stuff down here. So I hope I got it all and I'm starting again. I shared this previously. Where I said, I, why not if the daily logs in the back aren't working, why don't I use the weekly spreads and daily log as I go? So this was last the, the week that I tried it. This was the next week that I tried it. And then this is this week. Um, it's going well. I feel like I'm definitely having all of the things that need to be on there, on there. Not necessarily processing them, but necessarily having them there to go back to process them when I have the headspace to do so. And so I'm not sure if I want to actually start decorating the page, but maybe... I can find, I have, maybe I do want to start decorating that indecisiveness always. So I talked, did I talk about this, that I want to use this maybe in my journal? And I also like this, maybe I can stick this somewhere here and then write on there. That's something. I got this, oh, I remember, I talked about this last week. Ha! Um, then I put a lot of ephemera into here that I want to use. This I want to put on a journal cover somewhere. And this is Happy Mail from Shauna that I received this week. I haven't even looked at this yet. Maybe we should, maybe we should do that. This is a um, washi tape that my friend Amy sent over to me. And just by looking at it, I'm pretty sure this is the same artist, Dodo Lulu. Also, I did actually buy something, but it's probably going to be a long time until it gets here. I really love these... I seem to love something that I have learned about myself. Here we go. Wisdom shared is these washi tapes where you have snippets that you can that are multi-colored. It's not one design for 10 meters. Well, this is definitely one design because it starts repeating after a while. As you can see, like here's the black dots and the black dots are up here. But I love using them to ground, cut apart pieces. Like if I cut out this lady, I would put this down and then stick this on top. That's something that I love doing. Um, and so this is a perfect tape for exactly that reason. Um, and so I really like tapes like that. And I also like tapes where basically I have a different design for every, like it never repeats. So I probably am more of a sticker kind of person, sticker sheet kind of person than a washi tape person. 
as I'm talking, I'm realizing, but there are some washi tapes out there that do this really great. And one of the artists that has been very appealing to me lately is the artist that did this. This is Pion, Pion, Pion. Um, and they either are coming out or just released a new tape that is very similar to this. I will link... What will I link? I will link a shop that offers this in the States. Um, but I actually purchased mine from AliExpress. And so it's going to be a long time until it gets here because I think that is an, a washi tape that I can use very, very easily. So I need to turn this around somehow. No, I'm just going to take it out. But yeah, so I have all of those stickers in here. There is Karina Loves to Plan stickers that may, 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 may go in here. I still have some of the almost, but not quite yet. Eh, I don't see that for this specific journal week. This one is one that I really want to use too. I oh, love this. Love these. I, I think I stuck this in into one of the spreads recently. This is another tape that Amy gave to me. So, what else is there? There is a weight sticker I saw. I'm going to take this out because it doesn't seem to work for me in here. I also have not... I really want to make a concerted effort of using these stickers from my mystery box from B Black Milk Project. This one seems to be more like, to me, this is a fall sticker. Put a pot on, pot of tea, coffee. Nah, I don't drink pots of coffees. Potses of coffeesies. Maybe, maybe I'm going to put this into September or so where it's not hot here either. But... There is my husband coming back home. Wait, what am I waiting for? Oh yes, we are in a season of waiting right now. I can talk about that. So I'm thinking of using this and this. And then the paper that I had in here. Um, and then let's look what's here. Maybe I can make a current spread. Oh my goodness, look at these. Teeny tiny heads. There's a puppy. Oh my goodness. I have something to share. I need to write that. See, I do need a, t um, a thing. What's that called? Post-it note. That's what that is called. So, but I didn't find it. Oh, it's right here. Ta-da. Ta-da-la-da-la. So, um, Max... Listening. So, my puppy is coming when he is called by his name. Occasionally, but like more frequently in the last week. Like when we're at the dog park where there's so much other distractions. When my husband is calling him, when I'm calling him, He's looking up and he's coming over. Maybe halfway to me, he decides that nah, 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 the other other dogs are more interesting. But, you know, I can see that there is improvement. And so that's cool. I love it. He just went into his crate by himself this morning. Wait, what? Who's this dog? Great. And recall. So, I mean, I've been thinking that for a while and I've been hearing that for a while that labs, lab mixes really want to please their owners. And I can see that 
it was visible for a long time that he he is he wants us to be happy about him and uh, he doesn't want to do things in spite i don't know if any dogs are like that but he definitely wants to please so what else of course the horrible thing that happened and that's why i think i can use that um person's face is broken finger <laughs> in germany we have the saying that uh, moms are are raven moms so rabenmutter when they don't take good care of their kids that's how i feel Ah, uh, my son has i've been thinking maybe i want to print the x-ray and stick it in here i'm going to write that down as well my son has a broken finger that he has had for four weeks possibly six weeks we don't really know because it didn't hurt it just swelled up a tiny bit and it he's a competitive climber sometimes things swell up and then the swelling goes back down but not in this case and so we went to see a doctor yeah it's a really bad break and the doctor said this probably should have been uh, covered surgically but now that you're here so much time later, which, yes, we could have gone and looked at it earlier because it, the swelling didn't go down, but he didn't, he didn't have any pain. Um, and there was no incident, not in his, like, when he was doing um, not crafty stuff, woodworking, which is also not building stuff, like, you know handyman things he was doing handyman things um not then n not at school he, he also didn't have pe at school anymore this for the second half of the school year um not at the climbing practice you know there was never a an incident where something happened where you could say okay Maybe that's the reason why the finger is swollen and maybe we should look at it because it got squished or uh, there was uh, an external force uh, on it. Nothing. Um, and so we didn't take it seriously enough, which we should have. I like this. This would actually work here. Um, there's a hay. And then there is a tag. Uh, this is a little thick. I'll use this for something else. There's a flower. Okay, this way, I guess. But this won't fit in here. I do have some of those flowers that are on this note paper. I think I do still have some of those flakes. So maybe I can pull them out. There's a stamped window. So, yeah, so this child has a broken finger. He's not going to nationals. He's very bummed, very, well, devastated is not the right word. Maybe, yes, maybe he is devastated. He wanted to come back, you know? New ink day, ink, ink. I need to stick those into my, um, Sticker release book. Yay. Hooray. Not the week for those things. There's a year of the dragon. Maybe I can find a place for this right away. Druggist telescope. Athens, Ohio. This is fun. There's some fountain pens. More new pen days currently inked. I'm often, I mean, I use these writing things, but sometimes I'm like, why do I stick this in here if I could just write it myself and then it's my own 
fancy schmancy handwriting, you know? Oh, I could, yeah, 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 yeah. How about either this or this pen sticker for a new pen day for the Lamy? Uh, actually, no, I don't like this one. Maybe this one? No, maybe this, possibly. Then there are some papers to add to stuff. Oh my gosh, I love this one. I want to use this next week. There's another pup dog. It seems like I'm getting, like, previously I got a lot of cat-themed stuff. Now I'm getting all the dog-themed things. But this is fun. I want to use those really soon. Um, I like this. And then there's Okay, okay, I got it, I get it. And what else? This, oh, made some stickers in Canva and scra scan. Yes, yes, exactly. Like piece of ephemera, dog like piece of ephemera I had wasn't much. That's okay. I like dog. Doesn't it also? It doesn't have to be a dog like ephemera all the time. Yeah, these are these are cute. And then there is some note papers too. Okay, so I think I got a start for sure. Maybe I'm not going to use any of those. Maybe I'm going to use a stamp. Maybe I'm going to just write. New pen day, maybe with these letters. I don't know, but that's a good thing. Oh, and then, and then, so they gave us, they uh, put a splint. Is that a thing that you can, with Velcro, put around your hand, your fingers, um, until we see a specialist. Now, the specialist appointment was on Friday, so I swapped around all my work schedule, so I didn't have two consecutive days off. I have Wednesday and Thursday off usually, which works out really well because I do all the house chores, meal planning, grocery shopping, all the things that need to be done to keep the family running. I'm so, you know, they need me so much, so badly. <clears throat> They do, and they love me, so everything is fine. But I do all of this on Wednesday, and then on Thursday, I try not to plan to do anything. So what I do on Thursday is play in the morning while the dog is sleeping, and then I do the rest, like, you know, take care of the family and stuff, like what you do when you have children and cats and dogs. That's what you do on Thursdays, or I do, because I work on Saturdays. So that is my me time weekend day on Thursdays. But I worked on Thursday, and then on Friday, on my day off, I drove around some kids, and I took care of the puppy who just wasn't, was very needy that day. And it felt like... I didn't get an actual time to myself. So that was sucky. So maybe I can add that to my paper, which I have lost now. Broken finger. So the specialist appointment was supposed to be this Friday. Now it's next Friday when I cannot switch my work schedule around. So I'm not going to see the doctor. My husband is. Um, but we are still waiting to see for another whole another week what we're going to do with this finger. And even though it was broken for such a long time, time, now that I know what is wrong, I feel really bad that we still have to wait for another week. Wait for appointment app okay and then um 
what else do, did I want to put out? I, I sold. Oh, I have another story. I have so many stories this week. It's because I don't talk to people. Yeah, that's bad. <laughs> um, so, I sold a pen. I actually sold a really... A pen I was not raving about, but I said I wanted to keep in my collection because it's the material that fascinates me. Sold a pen. And you can guess and tell me in the comments. Two, three, one. I'm saying it now. I sold my autumn full-size fountain pen from Sean Design. I have a new pen day. New pen day. And then I think I also want to add um, the home what makes my pen feel like home? So we went to the doctor on f Tuesday. Wednesday was a normal school day. Thursday and Friday was finals day at my son's school. So I told him, you know, go and talk to your teachers. Ask if they can accommodate you because, of course, the finger is broken on his dominant hand that he uses to write with. Um, and he cannot hold a pen with the way the, the break is. So he would either, ha either have to write with his right hand, which he cannot. It just would take way too much time, wouldn't be legible. And then... So we, we went through, okay, this is uh, an exam like this. Ask your teacher what you can do. This is an exam that works that way, so blah. So we went through all of the subjects, and the most crucial ones were, of course, English and social studies. They were both written tests, not multiple choice or anything. And the social studies teachers teacher just said, well, that's your... You, I don't care, basically. she. I think she said, tough luck. You cannot type it on a computer. Um, see what I care, basically. And it was, I, he came home and I was like, w wait, what? What exactly? Um, Every other teacher was like, okay, if you're dissecting something or whatever, they had to do something physical, practical, not a written thing for their uh, science final. And so the teacher said, well, you know what? If you hold and assist, they would be partnered up. The other person will be doing the majority of the thing. I can see that you won't be able to do this. Um, it's fine. If you help the person, I will give you the, the points, you know? Um, and also, what is the point of finals? If you're taking uh, exams and tests all through the school year, I don't really see what a final exam can add. If I am never being tested, then a final exam, I can see the reasoning behind and why it would make sense. Still not, I don't think it's still the, the best way to, to conduct uh, teaching and learning. But then a final exam makes sense. But if you're uh, showing that you're learning what you should be learning throughout the school year, what is the point of a final exam? Like... Um, And then we didn't know, I, I was like, well, if you don't take it, I don't care if you, if you fail. Um, but then we were, we weren't sure was the final exam, you know, do you need to pass the final exam to be able to pass the grade? It, what is it for? No, you didn't have to be, you didn't have to pass it. But then I just called the school. Uh, and asked how they would be able to accommodate him and if they would have would be able to help him uh, to figure this out with the teacher because she wasn't 
uh, very helpful today. And I usually try to enable my children to fight for themselves. Fight, you know, like this is not crucial for his life if he gets a bad response like the one with the tough luck for social studies i want my children to go there and deal do these things for them by themselves i could have called the school on the tuesday after we learned about his finger and said well how can we do this but i would love for my child to go and say hey here i broke my finger uh, i have a cast here how can we make this work so I can participate in the final? Uh, because this is how they grow. This is how they become uh, functioning adults. If they started learning these things when they're young. That's my thought. And I also feel like after this, you know, after that adverse reaction, I could intervene and i i just called the school if this is how they want this to happen so that he could have a backup plan but he decided and i think that's awesome i told him that you know what you can go up to your teacher again and say uh if if that was her last word and respectfully fight for yourself. There is no harm in saying, okay, then can I go to the front office and ask them what they can do for me? To, you know, to fight his own fight um, and find solutions on how to be able to deal with that adversity. And interestingly enough, I assume that after my phone call to the school the day before the final, um, maybe they talked to the social studies teacher because he went up to the teacher and said, are you sure? Is it like, do you really not want me to write, type my answers on the computer? She was, she was very uh, nice and said, of course you can. Um, but yeah, so is that even... What does it have to do with journaling? Nothing. But that's stuff that I really want to document. And I think one, two, three, four, five, six. That's all I want to journal about. Oh no! My daughter got a job. So I want to write that down too. Yes, that's what I drove around on Friday. I should have just waited because she had a 20-minute interview and came out with, I got a job, and then I had to go back and pick her up. Ugh. So, I think that's it. I hope you had fun watching. I'd love to hear whatever you have to say in the comments down below. <laughs> like, um... I just, I don't know. You don't have to say that you don't do the same with your children. I can understand both sides because I would love to, I would have driven to the school and just uh, told that social studies teacher off. Um, so I can clearly and totally understand when you're, if, if you are t the total opposite of me and are a total helicopter parent, um, it's really tough to not be one. Um, I think I, in the long run, well, <laughs> I also think it depends on your child because you can raise three children um, thinking you're raising them the exact, exact same way and all three of them turn out completely differently. So there must be something else besides the way you bring up your children um, that influences how they are going to be as human beings after that. Uh, but that's really deep and not necessarily part of a snippet from my desk video, but that's what's been on my mind this past week. 
Um, and basically, that's the reason why I haven't put anything in here. I was just too preoccupied and I focused more on writing letters in the small amount of time that I had for myself. Okay, some of my friends requested really long videos. I think this is one of those. Uh, you are welcome. <laughs> Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope to see you again in another one. I don't care which one. Um, I'm definitely going to slow down for the summer, I believe, for at least uh, the second half of June and the first part of July. And then I really need to think about what I'm going to put out and what I'm not going to put out. I will let you know, especially if you're a Kofi member, what I'm going to provide and if I'm just going to take the month off. I have one more sticker in my mind, so maybe I'll, you know, work on that during the beginning of July and then order that and send it out at the end of the month so that you get another little teeny tiny bit of happy mail from me. But that's all uh, I wanted to share for this week. Thank you so, so much for spending so much time with me. I really appreciate every single one of you who is watching. I appreciate all the comments. Uh, and I know that there are opposing views on the way that I am dealing with comments in the future. I didn't say that that's the right way. That's just the way that I want to approach them. Um, you can leave any type of comment down below. I care, but also I don't. So... <laughs> See you then. Bye.